I'm Ryan DePaul here with the American Sevens Football League with Sean and Mark. And today we're going to demonstrate just how dangerous helmets and shoulder pads are for football. By taking the pads off, we eliminate concussions in this very controversial topic that you see every day from all the way down to the youth to the professional level. Last year, youth football declined 10% because of concussions. If it's not safe for the NFL guys, it's not going to be safe for little Tommy and Joey at the, at the Pop Warner level. Mark here is a linebacker, one of the best to ever do it in American 7 style football. And uh, Mark, compared to playing football with pads, how many times um, do you smack your head into another player's head without pads? Without pads, not many times. I think without the pads, you're more cautious of your body. You, uh, your technique is a lot better because you're more cautious about your head and stuff. So I think with pads, you definitely smack your face and your head a lot more. And when you have the pads on, I mean, even though it's insignificant contact, almost every time you make contact, uh, do you feel that it's unavoidable to at some point hit your helmet on some part of the player's body? Yes, it is. It's very unavoidable. Pretty much every single play, your, uh, your helmet's colliding with another, another player's. Now, Sean is one of the best athletes I've ever seen at the uh, American Sevens level. He's played quarterback, receiver, running back, linebacker, safety, corner, pretty much every single position. Um, and I'm going to ask you, what's your feeling on helmets? How many times do you feel that you hit your head when you're playing with pads on as opposed to without pads? With pads on, you're hitting your head all the time. So you got to be real cautious. When, you, when you're playing without pads, Like you know you're not going to hit your head because you're not trying to get a nosebleed or a concussion. So you're more, like Dobie said, you're more cautious with your, with your body without pads. So we're going to go through some football drills today with pads, without all aspects, covering, blocking, run blocking, tackling, shedding blocks. And we're going to show you just how many times these helmets collide during a football game. All right, the first demonstration that we're going to do is Mark is going to guard Sean as if he's going out for a pass. Something that you don't ever usually think helmet-to-helmet -helmet collision happens, okay? But I'm here to show you today that all these small shots add up during the course of a game. So Mark's going to press Sean off the line of scrimmage just as he's a receiver going out for a pass real quick. On my set, go. Set, go. Next drill that we're going to do is just simple run blocking. Okay, we're gonna get Mark in a three-point stance. Sean's gonna line up like he's a defensive end. Okay, and we're gonna take a look and see how much helmet-to-helmet -helmet collision we get. Set, hit. Again, we're going about an eighth of the speed of what you'd see in a normal football game. All, all these small collisions are the same as if you were watching a boxing match and all the jabs are adding up. It's the same thing. These guys go through practice all week, whether they're going half speed or full speed, and we haven't even gotten to the big collisions yet. It's the same as a boxer taking 30 jabs in two rounds. The next demonstration we're gonna do, we're gonna line Mark up at linebacker. Sean's gonna be a guard. And Mark's going to shed a block, just like he would probably do 50 times in a football game. But this type of helmet-to-helmet -helmet collision is not acknowledged because it's not severe. But like I said before, it's the same thing as getting jabbed in the head by a boxer. Okay? Set hit. Set hit. All right, good. And now for the last demonstration, we're going to go over tackling. And this is where you see the most dangerous hits. Okay? In our American 7 style football, you have to wrap up, okay? You don't have protection on your face. You don't have protection on your head. You don't have this weapon of a helmet and shoulder pads. You have to make a proper form tackle or you're going to get hurt. So, again, we're going about a 20th of the speed. Set, hit. Okay? Now, even though, even though we're coming in, perfect form tackle, Mark's still hitting the front of his face on, on his... Uh, 
on his shoulder pads. I want, I want you to just to try to avoid having any part of your head hit him right now. Just try to avoid it. Let me say, set hit. Okay, it's impossible. It's impossible. Try it again. I want you to not touch your helmet to him. Don't do it. Set yeah. hit. <laughs> okay, it is not possible to avoid helmet to helmet contact in a sport where your helmet's this big and your shoulder pads are this big and you're taught to use your shoulders and taught to use this area of your body. It is not possible. <laughs> If you had a son, would you rather him play in an environment like this with no special teams? By the way, we don't play special teams. Some of the most vicious hits you see in the NFL are on kickoffs, on punts, crackback blocks, guys running into each other full speed. We don't play special teams. If you had a son, would you rather him play American 7 style or would you rather put pads on him? With the way it's going with concussions, I'd rather him play the A7 style. And to tell you the truth, I don't have a son yet. Um, I don't even know that I would put him in football with the way it is. I would definitely 100% put him in the A7 style of football before I would even dream about putting him in pads. Growing up as a football player, playing Pop Warner, playing high school, playing college, and I've also myself have played nine years of Town B football with no pads. I suffered many concussions. My, my career in college was ended because of concussions. Could not play anymore, okay? And then six years later is when I came and started playing seven on seven, no pads, and have never had a concussion in nine years and over 150 games. So that's it. I appreciate Sean and Mark coming out here and doing this demonstration for us. You get to see them next Sunday in the final four matchups as they head possibly for, what is it, a seventh championship? Okay, hopefully they're in that game and they bring it home here in Sarahville where all this stuff started, by the way. And uh, wish them luck, man. That's it. A7FL, we're out of here.